Today's gospel emphasize how God's ways are not always aligned with our sense of fairness, and his ways are more loving and generous than we can usually understand. In the gospel, we might easily have empathy for those workers who put in a full day's work and did not receive any more than the latecomers. So what did they do? They grumbled and complained and asked, how can this be fair? Well, this story from Jesus about fair pay hit home and resonated with me many years ago when I was part of a team managing the construction of a 40-story high-rise building in Connecticut. Another co-worker and I were the first ones who volunteered for a transfer from Chicago to work on this large project. And in doing so, the company gave us a monthly subsistence bonus to offset the additional electrical and heating costs between the two different locations. We thought we hit the jackpot, getting another $150 a month, equivalent to about a 10% raise back then. And I had a good thought, if I lowered the thermostat and froze a little, I could pocket this money. It was a good idea, but it didn't work out too well. Well, my specific assignment was to coordinate the trades for the building shell, including steel, concrete, glass, and roofing. This is where I learned how to be lifted in a bucket by a crane operator to the working floors way up high, and how to walk the steel with the iron workers, or in my case, more likely a low crawl. About a half year later, the company transferred out a couple more people, and we found out that they received the same subsistence, but this time $300 a month for the same thing. They actually had an easier job than we did and didn't have to walk the steel in the cold and windy weather. So Tom and I, the first ones that were transferred, started grumbling to each other, just like the workers in today's story. A few months later, the company transferred out two more project managers, and this time one of them was my former college roommate. And when he told me he received the subsistence for heating and electric of $500 a month, I was beside myself and wanted to confront the boss about these inequalities and, and get this fixed. When it did occur, his response was, you cut your own deal, go live with it. That exactly wasn't the response we were looking for. So what did we do? We continued to grumble, just like the workers in today's gospel. However, there's a real good story behind all this. See, Tom and I became close friends because of this. And he was the one who actually got me back to attending Mass on Sundays in a very unusual way. One day in the office, he called me lazy. He called me lazy for not attending Mass on Sundays. How dare him call me lazy when I thought he was the slacker in the office? And I wasn't going to stand for this. So what did I do? I had only one option. I started attending Mass with him every Sunday. And after Mass, the two of us would go play 18 or 27 holes of golf and made it a perfect Sunday. This was his way of evangelizing and getting me back to church, and the insult and the golf worked. I mentioned earlier that this gospel resonated with me. Well, one of those Sundays, we both listened to this passage, and as we heard it, we looked at each other, and it hit home. We clearly sided with those early workers who worked all day and didn't receive any more pay than the part-time help. We focused on how much each worker was paid and missed the big picture of Jesus' story. It became clear when we heard the homily and the real gospel message started to set in. God is the generous landowner who welcomes people to his vineyard until the very last moment. For God, it's never too late for people to come to him and do his will. Those who show up late in life and have faith will be accepted, just as those who have been faithful their entire lives. What counts in the kingdom of God is not about seniority, but the diligence of heart and faith. God loves all of his children, and his mercy extends beyond our own conceptions of place and time. His ways are not our ways, and his ways are more loving and generous than we can understand. He freely bestows his love and grace on all who are open to receiving it, regardless of when we realize it. The apostles have been with Jesus from the beginning, and while they had a special role in his ministry, he wanted them to know reward in the kingdom is not based on how long you've served, but on the quality of your response to him. See, Matthew's gospel is a challenge for all of us. 
Our first instinct is to take sides with those laborers who sweat it out all day. However, God sees a different picture. The last group must have thought that God answered their prayers, that someone somewhere would at least give them work before the day was over. They probably expected to receive only pennies for their time, and what a shock to get a living wage to return to their families. The landowner understands what it takes for these workers to be able to subsist, to care for their families, eat, pay taxes, and help self-respect and the dignity of work. All the workers called into the vineyard were equals. They all needed that wage in order to support their families. When we finally understand that the landowner is God, this all makes sense. His mercy is so generous that we can only hope to know, love, and serve him all the days of our life. So what does this all mean for us today? Everyone has a sense of justice, a voice of conscience that tells us what's right and what is not. In school, the student who studied hard for a test and got a C certainly does not like the one who hardly studied at all and got an A. You might feel it's an injustice at work when someone gets a promotion you felt you earned, or a larger subsistence check that you thought you should have gotten. I need to get over this. But when it happens, we may ask God, why them and not me? We need to think of the big picture and not become petty about small things in life and comparing ourselves to others. We are called upon to be as giving and forgiving of others as God has been to us. He loves us all equally. The cradle Catholic, the same as the convert. The sinner is the saint. Every person here at church is loved by God and we need to embrace it. The parable has a meaning for every age and every family and everyone that wishes to grasp Jesus' basic theme. In his teaching, he is giving an example of the kingdom of God, a kingdom where generosity and the element of surprise do not always fit into our expectations. Like the landlord, landlord, landowner in Jesus' parable, God never cheats anyone and treats everyone the same. He has exceeded the level of generosity for those who are faithful. It is kind of like watching a good coach in action. Now that it's football season, Watch Coach Harbaugh the Ravens. He treats the bench players the same as the starters. The bench player receives the same respect, and God will do the same for us. God will open up the doors for his kingdom and the bench players, just as he will for the starters. The doors to his kingdom will be wide open based on the quality of our faith. So as we go about our day, let us seek God and remember his generosity and love and mercy. And no matter where we enter his vineyard, let us thank God for the opportunity to work for him, because his ways are more loving and generous than we can usually understand. Amen.